I'm back. Ah! After 10,000 years, I'm free! It's time to conquer Earth! It's all happening now! I know you hate it, but it's all happening now! Hey, what's up, fam? It's me, your boy, Gamer Who Lifts, and I'm back once again with an all new video. My apologies for the long hiatus away from YouTube. My life's been really busy lately, but I'm finally back. Today's episode is titled, Let's Review Games, where I've gone through and personally selected six recently purchased games, ranking them from last to first. So sit back, grab that favorite adult beverage, and enjoy. Let's check it out. I am Gamer Who Lifts. Alright, coming in at number 6 on my list is an old school retro title. I found this one cheap on eBay. And that is Double Dragon for the Sega Master System. Double Dragon was developed by Technos Japan in 1988. A good old-fashioned beat-em-up, Double Dragon follows twin martial artists Billy and Jimmy Lee as they fight against various adversaries and rivals. Originally an arcade game, home versions were eventually released for the Nintendo, Master System, Atari, Game Boy, and Genesis. As the player, you take control of either Billy or Jimmy Lee as they fight their way into the turf of the Black Warriors gang in order to rescue Billy's love interest Mary Ann. The players are equipped with various martial arts techniques. Techniques ranging from basic punches and kicks to more elaborate attacks such as throws and elbow strikes. Each player begins the game with a certain number of extra lives and a life gauge which depletes as the player takes damage. Also, the player must complete each stage within a time limit. One life is lost if either the life gauge or the timer reaches zero or if the player character falls off the bottom of the screen. Double Dragon was followed by two sequels, Double Dragon 2 The Revenge in 1988 and Double Dragon 3 The Rosetta Stone in 1990. Technos Japan also produced a fourth game in the series titled Super Double Dragon, released exclusively for the Super Nintendo in 1992. Double Dragon is a game that brings back a lot of nostalgia for me. It's fun to play by yourself or in a group of friends. I give Double Dragon for the Sega Master System a 3 out of 5. Next on my list is another retro-ish title. I found this one fairly priced on the Facebook sell page. And that is Banjo-Tooie for the Nintendo 64. Banjo-Tooie is a platform game developed by Rare Entertainment. It was released for the Nintendo 64 in 2000, and is the second game in the Banjo-Kazooie series and a sequel to the original Banjo-Kazooie. The game follows series protagonist Banjo, a bear, and Kazooie, a bird, as they attempt to stop the plans of the main antagonist, Gruntilda. Together they must stop Gruntilda from vaporizing the inhabitants of the game's world. Banjo-Tooie features levels that are significantly larger than those of its predecessor and requires the player to complete various challenges such as solving puzzles, collecting items, and defeating bosses. It also includes a multiplayer mode where up to four players can compete in several mini-games. Similar to its predecessor, Banjo-Tooie features three-dimensional worlds containing items to be collected. Among the items are golden jigsaw pieces, called jiggies, that are used to complete jigsaw puzzles, unlocking new levels. In 2009, Banjo-Tooie was re-released as an Xbox Live arcade game for the Xbox 360. 
a sequel was also released for the Xbox 360 titled Banjo-Tooie Nuts and Bolts. This game received a fairly lukewarm reception upon release, due to some of the fans being torn between how the game mechanics differentiated from the originals. This iconic game takes me back. I remember spending many hours playing this game growing up. I give Banjo-Tooie for the Nintendo 64 a 3 out of 5. Coming in at number 4 is one super addicting game that a buddy referred me to. And that is Darkest Dungeon for the Nintendo Switch. Darkest Dungeon is a role-playing video game developed by Red Hook Studios. It was first released in 2016 for PC, then later came out on PS4, PS Vita, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox One. As the player, you learn that you have inherited an estate from a relative. Your ancestors seek to gain fame and fortune by excavating the dungeons and catacombs beneath their manor. By doing so, they had unearthed portals to dark dimensions and released a number of horrific and evil creatures onto the world. As the current owner of the estate and the surrounding lands, the player must recruit a roster of adventurers and mount expeditions to clean the estate of its vile inhabitants. The player manages a roster of heroes to explore dungeons below several gothic mansions. Played out in a mix of real-time movement and turn-based graphics, a core feature to Darkest Dungeon is its affliction system. This is the measurement of stress levels to each hero that can increase with further exploration and combat. A character sustaining a high stress level may gain afflictions that will hamper or possibly enhance their performance as an explorer. Though a hero will have little stress when they are hired, it will worsen from a number of factors encountered while in a dungeon such as adventuring without food or light sources, seeing the death or wounding of a fellow party member in battle, or from blights cast on them by enemies. If the hero's high stress remains unchecked, they will develop afflictions that will interfere with the behavior of the character, such as frightened or unable to fight directly. Afflictions can be removed back in the village by performing special activities such as drinking at a bar or repenting at a church. Allowing a hero to reach an extremely high stress level can cause them to have a heart attack and lead to certain death. I have to say, Darkest Dungeon is a very addicting game to play. Even after dying multiple times, I still couldn't put it down. If you like dark, suspenseful themed games, this is the game for you. I give Darkest Dungeon for the Nintendo Switch a 3 out of 5. Coming in at number 3 on my list is one of my top 10 favorite games of all times, and that is Brave Fencer Musashi for the PlayStation 1. Brave Fencer Musashi is an action role-playing game developed by Square Entertainment. It was released for the PlayStation 1 in 1998. This game involves real-time sword-based combat in a 3D environment. It also features segments of voiced-over dialogue and role-playing game elements, such as day-night cycle and resting to restore energy. The story follows Musashi, a young swordsman who is summoned to a parallel world to defend the Alukana Kingdom from the Thirst Quencher Empire. He searches the kingdom for the five scrolls, which can enhance the powers of his swords. As the player, you control the powerful Musashi, who fights a variety of enemies using his swords, Fusion and Lumina. The two swords he uses have varied abilities and uses. They are used to chain rapid combo hits together, and can be used to absorb Bincho energy. The game features an in-game clock and day-night system that affects the townsfolk as well as forcing the player to pay attention to Musashi's fatigue rating that goes up over time with lack of sleep. This can have deteriorating effects on his combative ability. The player can either go to an inn to recover Musashi's health 
or make Musashi sleep outdoors without a full recovery with the danger he may be attacked by enemies. Along the way, Musashi obtains parts of a legendary armor, which allows him to perform actions such as climbing and performing double jumps. This game is all around great. If you like epic adventure based RPG games, then Musashi is right up your alley. I give Brave Fencer Musashi for the PlayStation 1 a 4 out of 5. Coming in at number 2 is a game that looks so good on its commercials that I immediately ran out and pre-ordered a copy. And that is Sekiro Shadows Die Twice for the PlayStation 4. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is an action-adventure game developed by From Software and published by Activision. It was released worldwide for Microsoft Windows, PS4, and Xbox One in 2019. The game follows a Sengoku period shinobi known as Wolf as he attempts to take revenge on a samurai clan who attacked him and kidnapped his lord. The game was developed by the same maker of the Souls series games, Dark Souls 1, 2, 3, and Bloodborne. This game is known to be outrageously hard. While its high level of difficulty received some criticism, praise was directed towards its gameplay, story, and setting. Some things that I like about Sekiro is that it includes gear upgrades, a skill tree, and limited ability customization. Also, rather than attacking enemies to whittle down their health points, combat in Sekiro revolves around using a katana to attack their posture and balance instead, which eventually leads to an opening that allows for a single killing blow. The game features stealth elements, allowing players to immediately eliminate some enemies if they can get within range undetected. In addition, the player character has the ability to use various tools to assist with combat and exploration. One tool is the grappling hook which can be used to swing from one point to another. If the player character dies, they have the option of being revived on the spot if they have resurrection power, which is restored by defeating enemies instead of respawning at earlier checkpoints. I currently have a love-hate relationship with this game. On one hand, I love the story and all the cool enemies that you get to fight, but on the other hand, I dislike the difficulty of the actual gameplay. I give Sekiro Shadows Die Twice for the PlayStation 4 a 4 out of 5. Alright, last but not least, this game is one that I also had to run out and pre-order. Today's champion, coming in at number 1, World War Z for the PlayStation 4. World War Z is a third-person shooter game developed by Saber Interactive and published by Mad Dog Games. It was released for Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One in 2019. Loosely based on the 2006 book of the same name and set in the same universe as the 2013 film adaptation, the game follows groups of survivors of a zombie apocalypse in the cities of Moscow, New York, Jerusalem, and Tokyo. The game is a cooperative third-person shooter in which four players fight against massive hordes of zombies in the four cities mentioned earlier. Players can choose from six classes including Gunslinger, Hellraiser, Fixer, Medic, Slasher, and Exterminator. New perks and weapons can be unlocked for each of the classes as players progress in the game. The game can support up to a thousand enemies appearing on screen simultaneously and they can climb onto each other to reach players at higher levels. Players can collect different items in the battlefield, but their locations are procedurally generated. In addition to fighting zombies, players also need to complete different objectives such as escorting survivors. The player vs player vs zombie mode pits two teams of players against each other while the zombie hordes attack both teams. Other modes include swarm deathmatch, Swarm Domination and King of the Hill. Damn it, Bobby!
I am a huge fan of anything zombie themed, and the fact that the zombies in this game can climb up walls makes it even more exciting. I give World War Z for the PS4 a solid 4 out of 5. Alright guys, there you have it. Six of my favorite recent video game purchases. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, thank you for watching my video. If you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe button on the way out. And stay tuned for more Let's Review Games videos to come in the future. See you next time.